Warning. This video is not supposed to be an insult or parody. It is meant as a tribute to a YouTube channel I've been a fan of for years, even if my version seems inferior. If you dislike the video, I suggest you go watch my favorite video they made from the link in the description below. I'll please try to enjoy this. Thank you. It's time to take you back to the past. To play... Well, you know the rest. In 1990, a special figure was born onto Danish television by Ivan Sølvason and Nils Krog Mortensen. His name was Skamtrollen Hugo, or Hugo the TV Troll. The plot usually involves saving his wife and three kids from the evil witch Skulia and her evil goons. Kind of like how Bowser and Mario deals with each other, with Princess Peach acting as the damsel in distress. Hugo was a massive success, spawning multiple movies, books and even albums and a musical. Most impressively, it had a TV show where children could call in and play the game through their phone. And this was back in the 90s, smartphones wasn't a thing yet. In order to play it, you had to be pressing the phone buttons on your parents' landline while looking at the TV. However, these games wasn't easy, maybe due to the time it would take for a command to travel through the phone line through the TV studio and then be translated into a move on the screen. That shit blew my mind back in the day, that such thing could actually exist. But despite calling in every week, I never got to play. Instead, I had to settle with the console port with Hugo serving as its mascot. The games themselves span from Commodore 64 all the way up to PS2 and mobile. The games themselves were part of many different genres, from platformers and educational games, to sea battles, advanced frogger and mini game collections based off the TV show. And that is what brings me to this nightmare from my childhood. Hugo on PS1 from 1998. This game is basically a mini game collection from some of the Commodore games and the PC games. They've taken some of the best of them, remastered them, updated visuals and the sound effects, basically making it one of the first remasters of its kind. A concept we are very familiar with this day today. Now why this game above all else? Well it's very simple. It's fucking pissing me off! As a kid, I found completing this game impossible. I've completed Sparrow, Crash Bandicoot and multiple Disney games 100%. But this was the curse that broke my winning spree. Sitting on top of my shelves together with Mickey's Wild Adventure just gloating down on me and reminding me how much of a shit gamer I was. But I've grown a lot as a gamer. In fact, last year I beat that Miggy game. So there's only one last knot from a childhood left untied. So let's pop this son of a bitch in and let's feed some motherfucking trolls some justice. Hmm. It appears I haven't used that PlayStation since I completed that Mickey Mouse game I was talking about earlier. Fun fact, you see that paper stain right there? That is uh, milk. I once spilled milk on the game and uh, I was so pissed off at it that I actually used the manual to clean up the mess. Look, the, it, it's identical. That's how much this game could go to hell and it still can to this very day. But enough about that. Let's get to the real meat of the matter, shall we? Let's pop this son of a bitch in. So the evil witch kidnap Hugo's wife and kids and fly them to the top of the mountain where her lair is. From what I've gathered she needs them for a spell so she can become beautiful. Apparently she's an ugly ass bitch without the presence of some other ugly ass bitches. You know the drill, you get to the end of each stage to get to the next one until you see the end screen. There are two options from the menu, TV version and arcade version. The TV version has all the stages unlocked and the arcade version you have to walk your way from level to level. However, there's a few differences in the stages themselves. For example, in the plain minigame you can only fly left and right in the TV mode, while in arcade mode you can fly in all directions. In the forest stage you move at a constant speed on TV mode, while it lets you control the speed in arcade mode. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. I just wanted to emphasize that arcade mode is where the real game is at. So you have two options from the beginning, Forest or Lumberjack. Forest is a 2D platformer. You can choose the running speed, but you only get two options. You guessed it, slow as ass and fast as shit. If you go too fast, you might end up killing yourself, but sometimes you need to go fast to clear an obstacle. You go through a field, jump over bear traps, boulders, branches and spring traps. Who the hell put spring traps in a field? Aren't bear traps enough? What if you forgot where you put them and you get flung into space accidentally? Speaking of which, the death animations in the game are pretty cool. There's a unique one for each trap. 
It kind of reminds me of Crash Bandicoot where you could also die in many humorous ways. However, some of these cutscenes get old quickly when you see them too many times in a row. Also, every time you lose a life you get scolded by Hugo telling you to get your shit together. God, just shut up! Luckily, all these animations can be skipped by pressing X if you just want to get back to the game, so that's nice. The money bag serves as points in the game and are often placed in very risky places. When you get enough points, you gain an extra life. However, even though the bags look similar, they all do different things. Some give you small points, other gives you big points, and some of them even take points away? Are you fucking kidding me? So I risked my life for this sack only to get punished? What a ripoff! I want to tell them to eat my ballsack and piss off, but they keep flashing and promising one-ups, so I can't help but trying to get them. Like for example these ones, they're unreachable. How do I get up there? We know the spring traps is an instant kill, so that can't be the... Oh. You are supposed to jump the second you land, but the game never told me that I could do that. In all these games there are always button prompts on the screen to show you what you can press. But not with some moves essential to getting through the first stage. Yeah, some branches are too far up to clear with a normal jump and too far down to crawl under. You have to use a move you only discover out of frustration. Nicely done, assholes. Furthermore, why does Hugo go this way? Look at all the plain field behind him. There's no traps back there. Just walk around it instead of risking your life. What are you thinking? So I finally got through the forest stage with a bunch of patients and now I can choose between a train or a river stage. But do not choose the last one. Not only is it one of the harder and more unfair levels with dead ends and unavoidable death screens, but it leads you over to the skateboarding stage and the lumberjack stage. One of the first levels of the game! Now see, this I see as a major problem with the game. Basically, the whole game can be completed in three simple minigames. So why in the holy name of fuck would you ever go through that diving stage? It's impossible, I tell you. It's fucking impossible. I'd rather stick a Coke bottle up my ass filled with liquid nitrogen and jump off a bridge and see my ass splatter in a fucking thousand pieces as frozen bits scatter all across the asphalt like that fucking Freddy Krueger film. Fuck! So on to the train level, but you might as well have taken the river cause this is one of the most stickish minigames of the whole collection. You have three lanes to choose from and you have to avoid the oncoming trains. You also have a map on the right giving you a false idea of what to expect. Yeah, you heard me. I mean sometimes it's obvious what you have to do, but other times the train alter their course messing up your entire strategy. And you can't go backwards or regret a decision, so it's pretty much just a guessing game. It can even respawn you in a spot with an oncoming train without any means of escape. What a shitload of fuck! Come on, last life. Huh. 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 Fuck! Tolerant, tolerant, tolerant. Spill it, be absurd. And when you lose all your lives, it's game over. Back to the beginning. No save points, no continues. Well, let's try it again. And this time we can tell the west side of the forest to go fuck itself. The lumberjack stage still gives me bad flashbacks to my childhood. It would be a fun stage if it didn't have some major issues. First of all, there's no perception of depth in the picture. So it's too easy to screw up a jump and lose a life. Secondly, if you stay on a log for too long, you lose a life without any indication of how or when. And lastly, jumping onto a log to the left or the right side can sell you right into a branch with no log to jump to, therefore locking you into a cheap death. This stage is infuriating, but luckily I found a way to troll this game, literally. Simply get to the log in the middle and keep jumping back and forth until you reach the end. You won't get any points on this level, but who cares, you're progressing. I don't know, maybe I just overcomplicated the game as a kid. Because do you know the easiest way to beat that log game? I tell you, you just do this. You're playing the log game. Just grab a controller back home and do like this. You'll win in no time flat. It's harder to jump on your own log of shit than this log of shit. SHIT! Next stage is skateboarding. This is by far one of my favorite games, but it still has a few flaws. The hitboxes in this stage, for example, is pretty unforgiving, and the depth perception can trick you into thinking there's a gap where there are none. 
Also, this is the only level with music in it. Maybe it's a glitch, but I've noticed that all the other stages have background sounds and noises, but no music. Also, this tricky bridge part, it's all muscle memory. Now after that, we can choose between a mountain or a plane. Wait, now that I think about it, what is a plane doing up here at the Evil Witch Mountain? Couldn't she just smash it with a boulder? I'm pretty sure it's not her plane since Hugo appears to both have the gear and know how to pilot it. But she has a broom, so why would she need a goddamn plane? So if this is Hugo's aircraft, why the shit did he park it up here instead of back at his house so we didn't have to go through all this bullshit every time he needs it? It makes no fucking sense! On top of that, this is the easiest and shortest minigame of them all. Just find the mountain on the map, fly in that direction while avoiding flying under clouds and floating dynamite, and the game stops when you're close enough to the summit. So basically we wouldn't have to endure any of that other rage-inducing agony if Hugo kept his plane back home! This son of a bitch is most definitely trolling us! Well, come to think of it, what did I expect? Time for the final level called... Rope? Well sure, why not, I have the news ready at this point. The witch talks directly to the player and destroys the TV from the inside. It's kind of a cool little bit of immersion that I can appreciate. It then cuts to three ropes with a button placed on each. So what do I do here? There's like three ropes I can pull? Well I guess I'll go with that one. Fuck! Yeah, if you pick the wrong rope, it sends you back down the mountain. But you know what? I'm gonna beat this game. I won't let this little fucker control my life. I want my childhood back. You fucked it up. And now you're gonna pay the price, you little son of a bitch. Eat my asshole, eat my asshole, eat my asshole! Fortunately, it doesn't send you all the way back to the beginning, but back to choose between the plane and the mountain stage. Wait, the plane is still here? I jumped out of it in mid-air, how did it not crash? Well, let's pretend that happened and let's go back up on foot since we have no other option. You go around in circles, jumping over holes until a button prompt appears. There are some money bags on the pedestals to the left, but who cares at this point? You only risk getting yourself killed if you time your jump in correctly, and that would be a shame when you're so close to the end. Oh, a boulder, of course. So you better get practicing on getting those sacks so you can avoid the rock in time. But once you get the timing down, it's not a big problem. Okay, back on the top. Three new ropes. Don't fuck this up. I beat the game! Awesome! <sighs> now another stupid cutscene, who cares about that? I beat Hugo finally! This is amazing! I mean, maybe there's more to it if I beat all the mini games, but for now, you know what? I don't give a shit. I don't give a single solitary shit about anything. I beat the game and it deserves a drink. If only I had some rolling rock. <coughs> Hugo's family is set free. He takes them home and tells them about what he had to endure to save the day. Overall, this game is not as hard as I remember it. My skills and reflexes have improved since I first started playing. It's a nice trip down memory lane with the last unbeatable game from my childhood. But none of that excuses how much shit this game has put me through. This game may be easy as ass for adults, but it sure as shit is hard for kids. This game I received at an age of 5 years old, and it may have given me the anger management issues I have to this day. So you know what? Fuck this game, fuck it to hell, you know what we have to do now. Mille, come here! Come here, Mille! I need you to shit all over this game like you're a big fat hippo. You got that? Oh, oh, God. oh that's disgusting. Oh, that's a big pile of shit. 